And once again, I want to talk about my uh, favoritist new addition to NX, this time in the context of a sketch, and talk a little bit about the methods within the sketch that I use, as I get a lot of questions about this stuff. And uh, as you can see, there we are, 2406. Let me close out that. As I have people asking me what version, so I'm going to show it. Once again, I'm going to go into Menu. I'm going to go into Preferences. I am going into Modeling. And under Update, you want to go in here and say, like in this case, it's a small part. So I'm going to go uh, Continuous. And I'll say All as well. If this is a larger part. I may uh, go to Incremental and then First Level. But since it's small, I can use those settings. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and make my solids. Okay, so here's my sketch. Notice I have inside of the sketch a couple of groups. And I'm a big fan of this. And the reason why I'm a big fan of this is because sometimes it's easier to control everything in one sketch, group everything for uh, selection purposes, and you know what it is, and go from there. Now I'm going to set up a datum plane, go like this. And I'll say 10 mils. That way, when I come in here and do my extrusion, I want to extrude. Notice it says curves in a group. What group? And I'm going to extrude this out to this datum plane. So we'll come in here and say until selected. And I'm just going to use none for everything on this file and select OK. Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to create another datum plane. This datum plane is going to go halfway between these two. Let's just pull this out of the way for now. Pick you. Oops, there we go. So it's going halfway. The reason why I'm doing that is I'm going to do my next extrusion. Once again, in group, this is the stiffener. This is going to go out to this plane and select OK. Now that I have that, I am going to do my unite. I want to unite this. And my tool is that, my stiffener. And I am going to define regions. And I want to either keep or remove. In this case, if I want to keep this region and this region, these are technically two separate regions. They're divided by this rib. Let me show result. So once again, I'm uniting. And I've talked about this in prior videos. This has been there forever. But a lot of people are unaware of it. So I'm going to be doing a lot more of this in these videos. And so this way, I, I know I can see exactly what's going on with the sketch. The unites exactly what's happening, right? It's coming together in one. Now, I'm just going to undo the preview. I can also say remove, deselect those, and pick the regions that I want to remove. And get the same result. Okay, so I prefer to use this in this case. Select OK to create my United features. Now for the rest of these, I'm going to go ahead and hide those datums. And then for my sketch, when I pick on it, notice if I pick on one of the profiles in the group, I do not get any of the parameters listed. I have to pick on the sketch. So the sketch is going to list all of the parameters for everything. Now with that, you'll see I have an arm length. Now if I right mouse click on the arm length and go into step expression, again I like to call it the bump, I can take this, drag that out, and watch that dynamically grow, expand, or shrink, however I want to modify that. Select OK. Modification occurs. Go back into my sketch. I'll do the same thing with this boss diameter, step expression, and you see, and this is a nice way to exercise the part 
again, to see how everything is affected, right? Because of the way I have it constrained, these lengths are gonna stay the same. And as this gets bigger, you may need a thicker wall. So I have a formula set up in there. You'll note that the wall gets thicker as the diameter gets bigger. And if I make that smaller, the diameter gets, or the thickness gets uh, smaller. So it's a really nice way to exercise the part to figure out what's going on with it. Even if you're not gonna keep the change, even if you're just gonna cancel and go back to its original, you can have a quick look at how the model moves, how things exercise, how things are linked to one another to verify that, okay, if I do make some changes later on, those changes are, uh, are gonna update, it's gonna be clean. So if I have to add more to this, maybe this is just the middle of the process of design, right? I'm just verifying that my design works. The model exercises nice and cleanly. All right, so big, gigantic fan of that. Now, when I click on that sketch, if I go to, let's say, multiple values and I right mouse click on that, you'll note that I do not get that option to do anything because right? I have multiple items selected. If I pick all of these items and try to go in enter or do something along those lines, I cannot get any of those functions. So that's a one-to-one -one type of thing, all right? And if I came in here, go back into the sketch, you'll see how I have everything dimensioned, right? I have my uh, normal dimensions that don't show up as part of those parameters outside of the sketch. And I've converted the other ones that I wanted to see into actual parameters with the p-value, given them names, so that way I can see them external to the sketch. Okay, you can see here like this is a constant length, so I leave that as a value that's not gonna be affected by anything. This is a constant, this is a constant, et cetera, et cetera. This is a constant, so everything else is being modified or can be modified external to the sketch. Okay, let me go finish. So that's just another way that I like to use that step up tool, or like I, like, to, like I said, I like to call it the bump. I think it's absolutely great. It's, it's changed the way that I do things rapidly because again, I can do lots of verifications as I progress with the model.